Hi, I'm Ethan. <laughs> and I'm Georgia. And yeah, we're related. Today, we are going to be talking about a show that we both love. Uh, you know, we both got some fun lockdown memories of it. Uh, Grey's Anatomy. Uh, and you know, you might think these guys, what's going on? A bit of a fall from grace. They're not their usual selves. This is our first time filming in six weeks. So just be nice to us, please. Please be kind. Live with kindness. We've lost it. <laughs> that it factor. <laughs> Well, you know what had an it factor? Grey's Anatomy. I'm going to quickly recap the plot for you. The pilot introduces five new surgical interns, Meredith, Christina, Izzy, Alex and George, as they embark on their first shift, which proves to be quite backbreaking and occurs over 48 hours. I don't know what labor laws you guys got over it's there. It's a long shift. That is too much, babe. I used to do three and a half hour shifts at Coles and they were tough. <laughs> and I wasn't even saving lives. You were really, you were grinding in the working yeah. class with your three and a half hour shift. I was saving lives indirectly, giving the people the food they need. So that's true. We're all lifesavers some, in some way, shape, or form. But but this episode was watched by an American audience of sixteen point two five million people. Yeah. So you know we're not the only ones who loved it. Well, really, we're going to do something a little different this episode. You know, we're going to be talking about how it sets up the five main characters, the interns in the episode, and how that kind of you know it sets their characters up for the rest of the show. Absolutely. It's still going. We're on season, yeah. I think, 22. Yeah. But we were just saying that I feel like it does a good job at least the first 10 seasons, which not a lot of shows can say with most seasons going for like 23 episodes an hour long. Yeah. So the format for this pilot, we've given it a rewatch. It's like this is literally setting up with the first 10 seasons. Yeah. And that's what, one thing to mention. People <laughs> love the first season, the first few seasons. But we both are under the impression that season three or four is when it actually gets good because that's when Mark and Lexi come into it. <laughs> Exactly. It's like people like love to rave about a first season. Like they want to be, we were there before the bandwagon was. It's like, well, thank God some people waited. Like what? Mick Steamy. Hello. And it's like, you weren't. There was 16.9 million other people who watched it. <laughs> yeah, guys, you weren't that big early adopters. <clears throat> Major network TV show. Anyone heard of Australian Idol? Before we get into it, we need to get something out of the way. Are you a Mick Dreamy or a Mick Steamy? Like, which one am I? Who do I prefer? <laughs> Wait, so you think you're one of them? Well, is that, I'm just asking, is that the question? Or who do I prefer? <laughs> Bit presumptive. <laughs> who do you prefer? I'm going to go, I'm going to edit this back and play your little clip again. Are you a McDreamy or a McSteamy? That means you're asking which one am I. <laughs> I prefer McSteamy, obviously. And what one are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm probably more of a McDreamy. <laughs> Look dead in the camera. I'm more of a McDreamy. <laughs> I'm a McSteamy girl. Love McSteamy. And which one are you? <laughs> Neither. I'm a flop. Why don't you just come back down here and we'll pick up where we left off? No, seriously. You have to go. I'm late. The opening scene shows Meredith and Derek kind of on the floor and then Meredith running around. She's had a one night stand. She is freaking out. It's her first day of work at a new job and so she's like I'm running late she's freaking out she's like so you have to go and he is like um round two though like yeah. he's trying to risk he's like yeah. this girl looks beautiful and she doesn't want a bar of it and you know sets up their dynamic for the rest of the show quite well because we didn't say but Derek is the main love interest for Meredith throughout the show and you know but until they end up together spoilers um it's very much on Meredith's terms and he's the chaser and she's the chase it. She's literally running away from this man in this yeah. scene. She's like, get away, like, run. Yeah. He's like, uh, what? And she forgets his name, which is just beautiful. I, um, Derek. And she's like so cute about it. I'm yeah. like, I didn't realize you could be so hot. She's like hot. She's, she's the definition of a hot slut. <laughs> she's like, sorry, who are you? All sluts are hot. <laughs> Justice for we, hot sluts. We love sluts. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the next scene that we see, <laughs> the next scene we see Derek and Meredith. Fucking dog. <laughs> here you go. No, here you go. Let's chill. Let's chill cool. You go. Okay. So the next <laughs> scene that we see Derek and Meredith, they still are un unaware that they are now working together because Derek's attending at the hospital. She's an intern at and she, she needs medical help. <laughs> They're like, go get Dr. Shepard. She's like... Obviously, he doesn't even remember his first name. So there's no way she got his last name last night. No shot. She goes to get him. Oh, shit, it's Derek. They make eye contact. She runs away. He chases her down. And that's the dynamic. Yeah. <laughs> he's a chaser. He, he literally... It. Imagine a woman running away from you, and he's like, I'm going to make this look charming, but literally sprint after her. Yeah. <laughs> and God, he pulls it off. <laughs> and then they're in the hallway, and it's like, oh, 
There's a, there's a little chuck going. There's a little yeah. bit of riz. Uh, there's some sparks flying. Derek is, he's laying down the law. Yeah. The law is, I'm a hot baddie and yeah. I want you. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Shepard. This morning it was Derek. Now it's Dr. Shepard. What a line. He's just oozing charisma in this scene. We love it. Meredith loves it. And Meredith is trying to not. She's trying yeah. her best because she's a respectable woman. She's yeah. like, you are in charge of me. Yeah. Like, haven't you ever thought this is inappropriate? Yeah, good on her for having some boundaries that he completely ignores. <laughs> And continues to. Yeah. But it is like, you know, she's not, she's saying that she's not into it, but this is where you see the chemistry of the two, the two leads, which kind of holds the whole show together. It's like, this, this is these looks, like you can tell she's like, no, no, but. No. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, you can, the, the two mains just have great chemistry. Yeah. Owen Pompeo and Patrick Dempsey have talked a lot about this as well in their relationship, like on and off screen is like so close. And you can just like see in this exact like scene, like the way that she's like looking at him, those little looks, yeah. the look back, it's like they're just holding the tension so perfectly. And also I guess like the writers in that moment, they were like, Hey, I've got a second here. Let, let's get them to just look at each other. No yeah. script, no dialogue. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So it's a fun final scene. We want to talk about the Meredith and Derek, but before we get into it, we better give you guys a bit of, um, context so one of the main points throughout this first episode is meredith has a patient who's having seizures and they can't figure out why so derek puts out an incentive to any intern who can find out why gets to scrub in on the surgery on brain surgery with him and christina approaches meredith and is like hey girly let's work on this together and then they spend the days kind of trying to figure it out they figure it out meredith, meredith figures, figures it out. out and then christina and her have agreed though that she will not be scrubbing in because like she doesn't want to be in the room with Derek she's yeah, all like I can't of interest kind of vibes. you know and so then they go to Derek and they say hey this is this is what the issue is and yeah. they're right yeah. Derek's like oh my gosh all right Meredith you're scrubbing in and Christina's pissed about it but we'll get into that later so that brings us to this scene that we want to talk about where you know Meredith approaches Derek and she's like I don't want to like let Christina scrub in she really wants it I don't want to scrub in essentially she's like did you only choose me for the surgery because we slept together? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And then he hits it with a just kidding. Yeah, but Guys. it doesn't really seem like he's kidding. But it's really good because then he says he essentially... He talks her into it, yeah. He's like, you should not let us having sex get in the way of you doing a surgery that you earned. You're yeah. her doctor. Yeah, and you found, the, you found the issue. You earned the right irregardless of the fact we're sleeping together. And this is like shows a really good part of their relationship in that he's also a mentor, which yeah. is complex, which yeah. we can, we can it's understand. It's like a complex power dynamic. But Absolutely. But I feel like the show consistently addresses it and does interesting things throughout these seasons to address their power dynamic. And, but in this moment, I think it does show like why the love interest in the chemistry is so good because it's like, even when I feel like Meredith is being kind of abrasive and trying to go up against Eric, which happens a lot he still is very supportive. Like his yeah. mentor role is to support her. Yeah. She's like, he's like, hey, like you should do this. Yeah. Like, Here we're not seeing the, like the romantic side of the relationship. This is like a illustrating yeah, his like him in mentor mode because she is an intern. He's an attending. He needs to mentor her. And here he does. He talks her into it and she does the surgery and she kills it. And that's why they call him McTramey. And then she has this funny line about like how, how it was such a high and like, why would anybody ever need drugs? And it's like, well, she's clearly never woken up and had 10 homers for breakfast in Thailand. Have you? <laughs> nah, not into that. Beep. So I don't want to say it, but George is a deeply relatable character to me because <laughs> in the first scene, he dubs himself unforgettable. <laughs> no, forgettable. Oh, shit. <laughs> that is like, his first scene is so funny because it's like, you know, that they're all meeting in the lockers or whatever, like splitting off and he's trying to like riz up Meredith. He's trying to, he's going in for the cold approach. Yeah. He's like, okay, well, I've got to find. Like, he's not even going, you know, <laughs> he's just trying to be friendly, but because these are their beautiful women, he like just completely bungles it because he's got no riz, <laughs> even though he's just trying to be friendly. He's like, um, hi, uh, do you remember me? We were at the, I was at the mixer. You were wearing the dress with the sandals. Yeah. He's like just the listing to He's like, okay, like, Jeffrey yeah, Dahmer. He every single detail about our outfit. I'm George. O'Malley, oh, we met at the uh, at the mixer. You had on a black dress with the uh, slit at the sides, strappy sandals. And... It is kind of funny that like Christina and Meredith just like laugh it off, like whatever. But it's like in re if that happened 
if to a woman in real life, you'd be like, this guy is a fucking creeper. Like, I don't want, like, you'd be asking him to get swapped off. <laughs> you'd be like, uh, can I get a different one? Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, he's short and lovable. And yeah. he's silly when he's doing it. You can see it's like, yeah. you know, he's harmless in this moment. Yeah, you can see he's just kind of being friendly. And then it's interesting because, you know, with, <coughs> he's got kind of no game there, but he is like quite charming to the patients, which is a big part of his character. You know, like the patients love him. And we see this scene where, you know, he's just like, a guy's going in for heart surgery. He just makes him feel comfortable. Kill me now. I wish I could, but yeah, I'm a healer. What George has is platonic riz and no romantic riz. Like yeah. that is like, he's the definition of that. He's like really good in terms of like why a lot of the senior surgeons like him is because he puts patient care above just surgeries, which a lot of the interns fail to do. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a fun, he's a, honestly, I remember hating George but I think it's just like is what ends up happening with his character but in this first episode you're like oh this guy's pretty cool like it's pretty funny yeah exactly a, a plot point to the first episode as well is that Dr. Burke another attending he's the the heart surgeon guy the, the heart guy at the hospital is you know he picks one intern on the first day to assist him in a surgery where they'll actually get get to do surgery uh, he picks George to and, everyone's surprise yeah to everybody's surprise even George's uh, <laughs> George's from the show not George Oz um, so you know he gets picked and it is interesting because throughout the show he becomes Burke's guy like O'Malley's refer like he's like he's Burke's guy he's always there for him you know assisting in the heart surgeries and they have this you know really good on screen relationship but in that off screen relationship that George's actor is gay and the guy who plays Burke is like deeply homophobic and they had lots of tensions on the set and in the end like Burke get, got wrote off the show because of like how much you know obviously being a dickhead homophobic is affecting one of the gay leads george leaves after after burke i'm pretty sure oh. but he left because he didn't feel very supported by like the showrunners like because obviously he complained a shit ton about yeah. it and it took them like maybe four or five seasons to get rid of him yeah uh, anyway so then in this in the surgery uh yeah fuck burke's actor you're a dickhead bro um <laughs> If you're watching this, <laughs> if you're one of the <laughs> 16.9 million, million people are going to watch this. Um, anyway, so in the actual surgery, George ends up fucking up and he gets, and Burke has to step in to save the person's life. And all the interns are up in the gallery and he gets dubbed 007. License to kill. <laughs> and th this becomes like a bit of a, a thing for his character as well, is that like he isn't as good a surgeon as the others and he often like, goes like takes hits to his confidence like in the first episode we're seeing like he's not as good everybody's like and you know he gets a bit shaken everyone's talking about him and there's a really good scene after this where all the interns are together they're like he's like upstairs so like oh, everyone's calling me 007 everyone's calling me 007 the girl's like no they're not yeah. and he's like really and they're like would we lie to you it's like they would and he he, he he's like yes you would <laughs> yeah. but they're supporting each other like from the get-go yeah. like, the, these these cohort of interns are like okay you're bumbling, but you're our bumbling. Yeah. You know, you're trying to riz us up, but get in here. <laughs> get in for a platonic cuddle. It is a great, like, this is like another great, the show, like the main cast are also supportive of all the characters. We've got Derek being supportive in a mentor <laughs> role to Meredith. And then there's Christina and Meredith having a very supportive relationship. And then George and all the other interns. It's the same. Like they're a great group of friends. I actually think that is like a good point to bring in is that like, I feel like a lot of dramas will like write like intentionally like toxic characters to create drama. But what Grey's Anatomy does really well is like actually people are just consistently like, I feel like people think it's dramatized like the things they're going through, but it's like all the things they're going through are just things that actually happen to people. It's never like really about these huge surgeries. It's like somebody's going through grief. Somebody feels like they can't do their job right. Like those yeah. are the things. It's not the characters having unnecessary drama between each other because they've got a bad relationship yeah. if anything it's often it's the drama the and the mundane the... exactly in the real life god shonda <laughs> she does it again so the next character we're going to be talking about is christina a driving force in the show um, she's so intertwined with meredith they're like the other kind of major relationship is this key friendship between christina and meredith and how much they support each other and you know we start to see the beginnings of that in this first episode yeah, absolutely. I feel like in this pilot episode, the writers are trying to get two things across about Christina. It's that she's a competitive surgical shark and she cares about nothing more than surgery ex with the exception of Meredith Grey, yeah. who becomes her best friend. Yeah. And that is a tension that is explored across all the different seasons. Yeah. I feel like it's so beautiful and I feel like this is something that the – like, you know, the show is, like, rewarded for a lot from, like, women's audiences is that, like – 
showing the importance of this like really strong friendship. It's something that like Derek and her like have arguments about like throughout the show. And yeah. then like, Christina and her partners have arguments about, but they really clearly illustrate it's like, well, we'll, we'll be here forever. Where yeah. will, will you? Yeah. And it is a complex like relationship because we're in the scene that we'll talk about as well. It's like, cause it, it, they do have like a deep connection, but they often don't get that. They're not actually they're like, well, we're not going to do that whole thing. Are we like where we talk about our feelings, <laughs> like, even, <laughs> even though they do have this really kind of deep friendship. Yeah, absolutely. It's like a lot of like their, their love language is not words of affirmation. No. Let's say that. So QT. Well, they're both strong headed competitive women, like both of them are. And so in this moment, essentially where Christina in the first episode slut shames Meredith is a direct result of her losing a surgery from her. She's like, yeah. I can't believe you stole a surgery from me. Slut shames her and tells people that she slept with Derek after promising that she wouldn't. Yeah. So honestly, if you're watching this for the first time, you might think like, oh, they could have like an, an enemies kind of arc and they're not going to be friends because Meredith gets the surgery. Christina slut shames her for it. It's like, fuck you. You know, if you're going to be a shark, be a shark. Don't like come looking for like sympathy and apologize. And then you're like, oh shit. But then we get at towards the end of the episode, you get this really kind of, it's such a them moment. Where we don't have to do that thing where, you know, I say something and then you say something and then somebody cries and there's like a moment. And yeah. Like, good. You should get some sleep. You look like crap. Meredith understands her feelings around that and probably would yeah. feel the same. It's like they have similarities in themselves. She just goes up to her and she's just like, we're not going to do that thing, yeah? That thing yeah. being apologised and she just sits down next to her then tells yeah. her she looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then Meredith says she looks like shit. Yeah. And she's then like, Sandra look, is like, like come on. She's worse than me. Sandra is in no way that's true. Oh, well, that's not possible. <laughs> and we agree. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra could never look shit. <laughs> anyway, so it's like, it's a nice little kind <laughs> of, only, not that many scenes between them in this episode, but it really starts to kind of build the foundations of how their relationship goes on throughout the series. Get introduced to Izzy and Alex, but not as much. So we're just going to do a brief thing on that. Yeah, they, they don't need too much. So we see Izzy, it's like, she is nice. Like, that's like, you, you, she's hot and she's nice. And like, that's like, and they set her up in that kind of way. And they're like talking, she's a, she was a model. And the other interns are talking shit like, oh, did you hear one of us used to be a model? Kind yeah. Of thing. And it's like, dude, it's not a crime to be beautiful. Because <laughs> otherwise you need to arrest <laughs> Obviously, I'm in a life sentence. <laughs> okay, with Dharma. All, with, with all the other beautiful bitches. <laughs> that yeah, sounds like what? hell. Yeah, so I feel like Izzy's character is done well. Again, she doesn't have as much screen time as some of the other leads, but they introduce like kind of what she struggles with throughout like all the seasons is that she's immediately seen as the model and beautiful and that she's nice. And as a result of being nice, kind of similar to like George being nice, like she's not, she's like not cutthroat. She's like not as good as... Meredith and Christina who set as their sort of key relationship with each other is yeah. he's like a bit of a supporting role in the friendship because she is too nice yeah and as well as like later on in the show as even like a, a bit in this episode like she lots of like sexism towards her because she's like beautiful and nice and that's like that happens a lot throughout the show like she just gets typecast as being like dumb and like you know you're not right for this it's like what because she's hot <laughs> yeah and that happens like consistently from all different levels of stuff including like her own like friends and so it's like interesting like i actually think they do a really good job like with izzy stevens character which is something that you know is up to a lot of controversy like with the actor between shonda rams and katherine heigl but like this is a well-written character because like she is really beautiful and this is a thing that happens to a lot of women and they don't like throw it in your face it's just like consistently like throughout every episode there's almost like always a line about how attractive she is yeah. and it's so particularly interesting this is like a bit of a spoiler from not this episode but her big love interest like Denny Duquette like the reason that she becomes interested in him is because she doesn't feel beautiful around him and that's like the whole the whole reason she falls in love with him you know yeah but then the other main intern throughout the show is Karev but honestly if you just watch this episode you probably wouldn't get the impression he's going to be a main character because all you really see he's not with the other group he's assigned to a different um, re resident so he's not with the other main interns and you just see him being like a dick to everyone. He's like such a dick to the nurse because he's misdiagnosed. And the nurse is like, I think you've misdiagnosed. He's, he's like, fuck you. Like, I'm the doctor pretty much. And then he gets... Barely. Yeah. Baby Dr. King. And then he gets absolutely fucking humbled <laughs> at the end of the episode, which is just a beautiful thing to see. I love a man getting humbled. And yeah, it sets him up as like, that's kind of all you get from him in this episode, that he's a dick. But like throughout the show... 
he's like a lovable dick, but you don't see that like very early on. That comes comes to fruition a bit later. Yeah, definitely. Whereas in this, like, I feel like perhaps like he is like I guess <clears throat> like he's the toxic character. Yeah. Like essentially, like Karev is set up as like the guy that's going to be like annoying and in their class. He he probably evolves the most as a character. Like he's, yeah, he's still always a dick, but like. You he know. cares about everyone. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's like, just... he's not like a sexist. Whereas in this, like, he's literally a misogynist. And yeah. then it's like really interesting because like he is predominantly friends with women. And also like in the seasons, like his mentors are women. So he is a good character, but in this, he's just a dick. And Meredith absolutely humbles him at the end, which is beautiful. Um, so I have a little bit of a uh, think piece here. Ethan, a little TED Talk moment. I was saying to Ethan that I think, you know, while we were doing all these characters, that something that's really interesting about this show is that I feel like they use narration as character, much like somehow some shows use like location as character. Like Texas is like a character in Friday Night Lights, like narration is a character. New York in Grey's City Anatomy. is a character in Sex and the City. Exactly. The fifth main girl. Well, I'm actually a combination of all four characters. Five, five of you count the city of New York. York, yes. But it's like really, like, it's really obviously huge during this time of like filming and television but i think it gets a lot of flack and is seen as like poor writing sometimes which i can't disagree with more like i think that the narration is like really important and often like it, i think it's a strength and like yeah. we're talking about like in terms of like when you're reading a book it's like narration is often like key and like having these metaphors yeah got- it's, it's how it's used though because it can be used as a crutch where they just explain everything in narration but the way the Grey's anatomy does it is it's like metaphors and foreshadowing and stuff and not being like this is the plot and this is what's going to happen you know it's like here's a little poignant little thing for you to think on from the start of the episode and at the end we'll tie it into everything and sometimes it's a bit live laugh there's, love there's some hit and miss ones where you're like what are they like what was that like what are they trying to say yeah. but most of the time it's like really like good it's like something like you know generalized like about grief and you're like okay like we're gonna be exploring grief there'll be one and they'll say something and you're like fuck a patient's dying in this episode and then there'll be like four patients and you get like throughout it you're like oh which one's it gonna be because i know from the narration probably someone's gonna die foreshadowing and like narration even if you know stuff doesn't ruin a text it can like actually like, it can make enrich it better it. it can enrich your experience with it because you, you start thinking about it more, like you're more actively engaged if you're like you've got this in the back of your mind and you're okay who's gonna die you're, act, you're much more actively engaging with the media than if you were to just watch it and you don't have any of that and we love Grey's Anatomy um, you know this is a great pilot it does it sets up like we've just explained it sets these characters up for how they're gonna go forward and you know, there's other main characters, we, but we couldn't touch on everybody because this would go on forever. But there's also Bailey and the Chief. We get to see them. And they're incredible. And, you know, I'll just say one thing that doesn't age well in this yeah. pilot is like referring to Bailey as a Nazi for a couple of seasons. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, and even though we've spoiled a lot of it, I reckon go check it out. Well, much like Shonda's foreshadowing and narration, that's all we've done for the, for yeah. the, for the watchers, for You'll the viewers. You'll be actively like, oh, which one's Meredith? <laughs> <laughs> I know she is in love with Derek (laughs) and they end up together. Before we wrap this video up, you know, often in when we're reviewing something, Georgia will ask me, what character are you? And it's it's hard to say. And you know, it's hard to define you, Ethan. Exactly. It's hard to box you You down. You can't boil me down to a two dimensional character, but, but you could do a Shonda because they're four dimensional. (laughs) So, you know, we thought maybe ahead of time, we'll do do our homework, our research, and we've gone ahead. We've done a Buzzfeed quiz on which, which character from the show are we? And I wonder if people are going to get it. Yeah. So why don't you go first, George? (laughs) I am Izzy Stevens, apparently. Yeah. I too think I look like a model. (laughs) Um, Apparently I'm always bright, shiny, and in a good mood, no matter how crappy you're feeling. If I'm tend to think more with my heart than my head, and that gets me into trouble sometimes. At some point. Uh, And you know, I got, Alex Karev. So it just says, you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> and you're ugly hot. <laughs> no, it says, like Alex, you're strong, independent, and a tad arrogant at times. You're Preach. the kind of person who people underestimate. That's honestly true. But you're much more understanding. <laughs> so true. <laughs> you're much more understanding and caring than people give you credit for. Because people assume I don't read. <laughs> and I'm a fucking bookworm. <laughs> Well, let us know what doctors you guys yeah, are. Yeah, go ahead, we'll, do the quiz. We'll link the quiz down yeah. below. And if you've made it this far and you have not subscribed, please do. And leave us a comment saying how much you love us. So, there's only one thing left to do. <laughs> Ooh, first time, we're getting better. We are. What's Bang. up?